What's up guys, welcome back. So here we are in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, just finished hooking up. It's got a little, a couple little scratches and dents around it. Uh, it is a, a used unit, but it's a 2021, so I'm not sure how it's already used, but hey, whatever, right? Uh, slides don't go all the way in. That was annotated. Um, have juice hooked up, sat there, hit the button, they'll go out, but that's as far in as they'll go, so fingers crossed. Uh, before we take off, though, one thing I forgot, and I really, I meant to put this in the last video, and, well, I forgot. Uh, wanted to thank the Transport Bandits for making that for me. I, I thought that was really, really nice. Um, and... He told me there's a whole lot of story to this. I'm not going to go through it, but, you know, that's Cheryl's bike and his bike, and these are all his friends and families, and, you know, there's Mr. Bones and all these places they've gone. There's a lot of little details that go into their artwork that I thought was really cool. Um, it's Arnold's art. I'll try to remember to put it in the description. I've got a lot going on this week. I might forget. So if I do, go to their channel, and they put it in the description of every one of their videos. Really good artwork. Um, at a pretty decent price as well. So thank you guys again for that. That was wonderful and it meant a lot to me. Let's get on the road and I'll catch you later. Here we are in Sparks, Nevada. <sighs> Finally delivered. And I tell you, <clears throat> it is time to go home. These last two units. You guys saw the last video. You saw what happened there. And then this one. Going through Goldfield, Nevada. And two semis got tangled up. Uh, <clears throat> they were rerouting people around. And... Uh, well, it was not an appropriate road for the streetwalker and that fifth wheel. Um, those of you that follow me on Instagram saw half of what happened. Uh, if you don't, well, you know what to do. The little triangle down right, right, right down there. Then, as I'm finally out of that and putting everything away... I hear this hissing noise and somehow in the hubbub of trying to get through all that crap I had punctured my inside tire so <clears throat> got the spare on uh, not too upset about it I'm down to 330 seconds on the back I'm roughly 400 miles from my house I was getting new tires as soon as I got home anyway so, talking about those will be coming up uh, probably in this video. But we've also got some big modifications for the Streetwalker. It was delivered just about a half hour ago. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> finish getting this checked in, hurry up, get home, and finish this video for you guys. I'll catch you later. <sighs> Good morning. It is 6.30. And we're at... Well, obviously, Les Schwab. Uh, just a couple of miles away from my house. I got all my stuff out of the truck. Wife is on her way to pick me up. Here's that tire that, uh, well, I had the issue with yesterday. And 
wife's gonna come pick me up so that I can have a vehicle to come back here when they open so I can leave the truck here with them so they can get it done and then I've got a couple errands I gotta run today and depending on what time they get done with this truck hoping they get it done today uh, we'll start on the fixing of the, the tailgate permanently so we don't have this issue with it again by the way I don't remember if I said this earlier um, after the last video uh, I was testing it going down the road and I'm driving and I'm clicking the button on the dash nothing and I'm clicking the key fob nothing I stop moving hit the button on the dash nothing I click the key fob and it would open and obviously when you're in park the button on the dash works so I don't know uh, it sucks it I'm waiting to hear back it looks like they may have not taken my safety miles and I will get my self dispatch back I don't know we'll find out um, hopefully I can hear back from them today if not we'll try again on Monday anyway she should be here any second so I'm gonna oh you know what I completely forgot let's talk about these tires these wonderful tires uh, don't buy them and come in here and get my gauge handy dandy tire depth gauge so these are the what did I say they were the Navitrack Power King and I've got 42,000 miles on these and we're at 3.30 seconds. Uh, remember, I got 97,000 out of the Michelin. I got 93,000 out of the Iron Mans, which were awful. And I got these because they have all this siping. And I thought they would be really good in the weather. Which, by the way, up here in the front... We are still at almost 13, 30 seconds. And they started at 15. So these are great steer tires. But in about 15 or 20,000, all of that siping was gone. And we were down to this, which is really the same thing as those Iron Mans that I got rid of. Um, the Michelins that came with this were a decent tire. Uh, they were pretty good, but when I pulled the spare out, uh, you guys can't see it because there's no lighting. I'll, uh, I'll get some pictures and I'll throw them in right here. And this is a Continental, I think it's an HRS or something like that. Um, when we get it into the, the shop and it's actually, because I don't feel like crawling under the truck right now. So we get into the shop and, and we can figure it out. Uh, I'm looking kind of for that tread pattern. It's going to be good in the winter. It seems like it should have a decent road life. And, you know, I'm kind of just hoping all goes well with it. Anyway, don't get these Navitrex. Uh, I would almost say false advertising. You know, they show all that sniping, but it's not. Anyway, not a fan, not a fan at all. Don't like the Iron Man. Uh, they're great summer tires, but that's it. Any type of moisture, they're terrible. These, these are still okay in the wet, even though all the siping and whatnot is gone, but they're just not great. I want more. Um, they're great steer tires. I may even just keep running these as steer tires because what, what did I say? 42,000, I think. 42, 43, something like that is what it's at. And I've only lost 230 seconds. And they grip really good in the corners. So I may keep that and then do something like this for the drives. Uh, the, the pictures that I put in a second ago. Anyway. Like I said, wife should be here any second. So I'm going to go. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Let's fix that. Uh, 
as you guys saw in the last video, this failed. So I have everything sitting in the garage to fix this so it can't do that again. So I'm gonna get this taken apart and let's get in there and let's fix this problem. All right, the tailgate is off. Now, we had an issue. This little feller right here was bent. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that was probably due to um, smacking a couple trailers. And this was actually kind of cocked that way. So we couldn't get the tailgate off. Had to actually completely remove this, re-straighten it, got it back on. And now we have this. Uh, still has a little bit of adjusting and shimming and we gotta line it up right and, and all that, yada yada. But that's going to solve our problem because now we're completely eliminating the for the lock. And the only way to take this off or to open this will be to actually open it. So I'm excited, I'm pumped. Uh, but you know me, stock is not good enough. So I'm gonna make a couple modifications to this and uh, I'll catch up with you guys in just a bit. Okay, so we've just about got this figured out. I think all that's left is, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see them, that line and that line. I have to put a little notch in this top bar and that's just so that the camera will clear. And then this can be trimmed as needed to make it fit right. I left as much material as possible. And then once we get to the final stages, we'll trim as needed to make this just perfect. Uh, with that notched, that should give me an access hole right here. Run th that wire down to this. This is the only one out of that whole plug I'm using. All of these are for the locking and opening of the tailgate. And then for whatever reason, this one right here stopped working um, once I took everything apart. And that was this, which is just the, the little light that comes on. Um, so that kind of sucks that I lost that light, but I'll take losing the light over losing $1,500 every time this tailgate decides it wants to open. And besides that, I have a flashlight and these are LED and stupid bright. So not worried about it. Uh, I can put it in reverse, shut the engine off and the lights will stay on. So there's workarounds and honestly, I think it's worth it. So I'm going to get back to... Uh, well, I'm going to take my time and look at this and make sure there's not a better way to do it. But I think that's what I'm going to do is notch this, which is easy. Drill a hole. Oh, I'm bleeding. Through here, wham, wham. Make the connection here because this is the only wire out of that whole harness that stayed. And I've already checked it. The camera does still work just like that. So perfect. Uh, I had originally lift as much as possible because that light was here and it came all the way out to here. So now I'm kind of happy that I lost this because I can trim this down and not have to screw with this a whole lot. So all in all, not bad. Um, anyway, I'm going to get back to it. And there's not much left of the tailgate, but this is worth it. I'll see you soon. All right. So... We got the fifth wheel tailgate installed and then we made a little hole in it and that's for this which you will see momentarily there's a whole lot of trimming and shaping and and you can see there is there's a lot that happened in there and uh we're just about on final assembly so we'll go ahead <clears throat> we're going to silicone all of this uh with a, a plastic bonding JB weld stuff run that around the whole seam and uh, well you'll see the finished product here in just a minute
All right, so got the first step of it going back together done. Um, <clears throat> what happened was in order to make, I can't really get this, there we go. In order to make the camera fit, we had to either cut this piece out of the bottom here or cut a much larger hole up top, which then would have completely stopped the ceiling up here, or it would have been very difficult to seal. So we had to cut a secondary window, and then we're re-plastic welding that piece back in. This is just to hold it while the weldy stuff, the epoxy, epoxy, while that dries. Uh, as soon as that dries, which should be about another 15 minutes, we'll do the last step which involves running the wiring and putting that back on. And then it's done and you guys can see the entire finished product. Uh, as you can see, I was able to save the wiring harness. The whole tailgate is still good, minus where it got a little destroyed from the trailer. The only piece I sacrificed was this plastic trim. Well, molding, it holds all the the light and the camera and all that stuff. That's all that got sacrificed. So realistically, I can't imagine that little piece of plastic is more than probably 50, 60 bucks. So if I need to, I can buy that plastic piece, put everything back together, and then the tailgate's whole. Uh, for the duration that I own the Streetwalker, that's not gonna happen because there's so many advantages to this. Anyway. That does that, and I will see you guys once we complete the last step. And it's done. So, first off, there's no more push button. There's keys and a manual handle. Second, we made a little hole, ran the wire through for the camera, put the plate back on, So it helps if you actually close this uh, or else these don't actually lock. So now it's all locked. And like I said, it's not gorgeous, but considering we had to cut a hole for this and then had to make a secondary hole for the actual mount for the camera and then just plastic welded it all back together, it's not terrible and it's watertight. So we'll go ahead and all right, so I'm gonna have to figure out why the keys don't work. We'll figure that out. That's the least of my concerns at this point. Now, the whole reason for this, what should have been a maybe five minute, oh, a little longer than that, maybe 10 or 15 minute install. And it has now become seven hours was like I said, I had to redo the wiring harness, get it all redone and tucked up underneath there, zip tied up, all pretty. And then all this modification for the backup camera. Now, the reasoning for that is I wanted my backup camera to still work. And as you can see, it is still, that linking is annoying, the dinging. Okay, so sorry about all that. But as you can see, maybe. Oh, that's just about annoying, isn't it? There we go, you can see the hitch and the line is lined up. That's with the zoom, zoom out. 360 camera still works just fine. Regular backup camera works just fine. I would say that was worth seven hours. Uh, I gotta put the tools away for my spare tire because they didn't do that at Les Schwab yesterday, but whatever. All right, so that's that. Tomorrow, well, tomorrow the club's doing a charity event. So Monday, I will 
wash the street walker, get her all packed up, ready to go. Have to emissions test that because I live in one of the two counties in Idaho that require that. And then hopefully find a load and take off Tuesday. So that's going to do it for this episode. I hope this was informational and helpful. Remember, this only matters if you have the push button tailgate. If you have the manual handle, doesn't matter. Leave it alone, unless you want a fifth wheel tailgate. Anyway, as always, those of you on the roads, I wish you fair winds and following seas. Take care and have a great day.